Bujiri Namai Darag Narawa, and that means good to see you on Darug country. My name is Naomi Manning and I'm the Senior Learning Producer for Museums of History New South Wales. And I'm lucky enough to be talking to you today from Rouse Hill Estate in Northwest Sydney. I'm standing in front of the 1888 schoolhouse that we have here on the estate and this is somewhere where we run a lot of our education programs. Role play is a tool many museums use to help teach history and engage students in the past. Today, I'm going to answer the question, how do we use role play to help teach history at museums? Take a look at the schoolhouse. Here you can see it from the outside. And here you can see a photo from 1917 showing all the children who went to the school standing out the front. So to create an effective role play, you need to very thoroughly research the historical context so that when you go back in time, it's a convincing experience. How did we do that here? That actually involved extensive research that probably took over a year for us to do. So we first needed to gather a range of sources, archival material, photographs, documents from the school itself, like the roll call, information about the teachers who were here, and we needed to then thoroughly understand the experience. So what did the teachers wear? What did they look like? What did the students wear? Um, what ages were the students and how many students came to this school? And then what did they do during the day? What lessons were taught in, at the turn of the century in schools? And what objects were in the classroom? What did it look like? What did the students have? So once we had all that information, we could have a very convincing transportation back to that time. This is in fact our most successful program and thousands of students come and enjoy it every year. And the research supports the fact that using role play, it creates an immersive environment with which the students can connect with the past. It helps in their engagement with the program and it also helps with their skill development. So before we start doing our research to create a program, we need to make sure that the schools will want to come. And how do we do that? We have to link to the school curriculum. So first we need to map what's in the curriculum versus what do we offer at this site. And for us here at Rouse Hill, schools in the past are relevant to stage one and two. So this then becomes a stage one and two program, which means it's for year one and two. So our current example of Miss Fox at the schoolhouse relates to the stage one syllabus at the moment. And you can see here it relates to two different topics and they have questions that are really relevant, like how is the present different or similar to the past? Let's take a look at our program. Now this program is for year one and two and it's a 90 minute program and it allows the children to thoroughly understand what school was like at the turn of the century. So first the students arrive, they put on little costumes, straw hats and pinafores and collars for the boys, and then they're taken back in time and they go up to the classroom where they do a science lesson, a writing lesson on slate boards, and a sewing lesson and then they go outside and dance around the maypole and do some physical outdoor activities from the past. So by the end of the program, they've really got a varied experience of what school was like in the past. So let me cross you over to Tiana. Tiana's a learning program producer at Museums of History New South Wales, and she's going to start by taking you back in time and then take you through a small excerpt of the schoolhouse experience. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rouse Hill Estate. Before we begin, I would like to pay respect to Aboriginal people and acknowledge that it is upon their land we are carrying out our program. Rouse Hill Estate is a museum, so I need you to follow my instructions, walk carefully and handle any items you are given with care and respect. Today we are going to do a program called Lessons from the Past, where we shall travel 120 years back in time to when Rouse Hill Public School first began. You will need your costumes and imaginations. Do you know what it's like to pretend? Have you been to a movie, played dress ups or been to a play? Wonderful. I must say, you all look beautiful in your costumes. 
just like students from 1889. I too am in a costume. I'm going to play your teacher, Miss Fox. I might be quite strict, which means serious, but of course I'm just pretending. Notice Tiana has set the expectations for the role play and created a safe environment for the students. Schools in 1889 were quite different from schools from today. What differences do you think you might notice? Tiana has used an open-ended question so students can compare the differences between their current schooling and schooling in the past. Yes, I think you will see plenty of wooden furniture, chalkboards and definitely no technology. Are we ready for our adventuring time to begin? I'm going to ring my bell, turn around in a circle and the year will become 1889. Are we ready? Thank you boys and girls for walking into my classroom in such an ordered fashion. We shall now say today's date. All together now, today is Monday the 20th of February 1889. We shall now sing our national anthem, God Save the Queen. The Queen of course, being Queen Victoria, the leader of our empire. Please be upstanding. God save our gracious Queen. This part of the program has been set to a specific time and place by using the date, the Queen and the national anthem from the time. Oh boys and girls, you sounded like the birds in the trees. Well done, you may be seated. I am going to use the abacus as we recite our two times tables. I shall move two beads across each time and we will recite them all together. And two times one is two. Two times two is four. Here, the use of an object, the abacus, shows changing technology two over four. time. Eight. Two times five is ten. Oh, boys and girls, that is splendid. I think we can move straight on to our spelling words with that marvellous effort. Our words for this week are silk, thin and hill. Let us spell silk all together. S-I-L-K spells silk. Thin. T-H-I-N spells thin. We can move on to our writing lesson. And we are going to begin with one of my favourite letters. It's the cursive letter S, the beginning of one of our spelling words, silk. You need your necessary equipment of a slate board pencil and a slate board. In the top corner of your board, I would like you to write the cursive letter S. I shall do it with you. Let us begin. We draw a line on an angle like so. And from the top, we bring it around with a small flick at the bottom. Once you have done that, try and write the whole word silk. Another copper cursive letter S, followed by I. The extensive research here is evident by the objects chosen. Slate boards were used in schools in the 1880s. You may put your pencils down. We're going to go outside and practice our maypole dancing and marching. But remember my three very important rules at all times. Obedience, manners, and that silence is indeed golden. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration from Tiana of our role play program. I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions, Tiana, because you've delivered this so many times. What do the kids most enjoy about doing this role play program? I think the students enjoy the variety of activities that we have on offer in the role play program. Uh, they enjoy using a slate board and a slate board pencil, something very different to what they would use in their modern day classrooms. They definitely enjoy sewing. Uh, they get to say, take their sewing sample home and that is something that they love. And of course our outdoor activities of marching and maypole dancing are also really rewarding for them. So we know the students enjoy it, but why is role play such an effective tool to help students understand what it was like to go to school in the past? 
I believe it's because it's such an immersive method. Uh, the children get to play characters of students who came to school here a long time ago, and role play allows them to be transported to another time and place. And from the beginning of their role play to the end, they are immersed in this classroom and taken back to 1889. And for that reason, I think the role play program for them remains very, very memorable. And I've been doing this for many years, and I've had outside of the school, uh, people come up to me telling me they remember Miss Fox, they remember the day they were at Lessons from the Past. I hope you enjoyed having a look at our role play program at Rouse Hill Schoolhouse. There are lots of opportunities for you to use role play in your museums. Maybe you could look at a historical personality and take different costumes and objects that they used at the time. Maybe you could look at leisure activities for children and use things like skipping ropes or cup and balls or wooden toys that they would have used in the past or maybe you can look at occupations and have a look at farming equipment that would have been used at the time. There are many opportunities and I hope you can find a way to use role play at your museums. <laughs>